On this channel, we love exposing fake gurus, explaining why the new investment you've been pitched is a Ponzi scheme and why athletes go broke. One thing we haven't discussed yet is Instagram being the mecca of fraudulent behavior. In this video, we're going to dive a little deeper than just fake gurus trying to sell you their get rich easy scheme. The theme of this video relies on this definition of fraud, a person or thing intended to deceive others typically by unjustifiably claiming or being credited with accomplishments or qualities. Deception for personal gain is the reason why Instagram is full of frauds. I like that uh, <clears throat> I like the definition. A person or thing intended to deceive others typically by unjustifiably claiming viably claiming or being credited with credited with accomplishments or qualities. Oh yeah, you can do this, you can do this, you can do that. Okay, where's the proof? Show me. Um just take my word, bro. How insulting it is if we, you know, it's so insulting for you to not take me at my word. You don't trust me? That's basically what it is or qualities. Deception for personal gain is the reason why Instagram is full of frauds. Mm. Can you believe that this is the same person? This lady is showing us how two completely different poses can show two completely different results. And this is a side-by-side -side of an edited photo versus one that is not. What? They didn't just take away like, they didn't just take away like, like body fat and whatever they completely changed like her hips her torso like what wait what well obviously this isn't the same photo and whatnot because you know two different two, two different settings two different bathing suits you gotta you know just really just lost that weight and whatnot but it also just looks like she just doesn't have the same like torso like all together edited and here's my favorite natural bodybuilder. The term influencer gets thrown around a lot as if it's an outcast profession, but social media influencers have real influence on the people consuming their content. I think boomers still like poking fun at someone who is an influencer as a career, but that's a patronizing way of downplaying someone's effect on the purchasing of consumer goods. And this, and just to underscore this is that Again, people will say, you know, the internet is not real. You know, so what you see is not real. You can't trust that shit any more than you can just trust the word of anybody that you meet in real life. Just like you can't always trust that your partner isn't cheating on you or that your family isn't, you know what I'm saying, ridiculing you behind your back or doesn't really support you or that your friends, you know what I'm saying, aren't really trying to sell you out. You know, the internet is just the domain on which we engage in certain activities, interact with one another and exchange information and, 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 and just, you know, and just as much, you know, expose ourselves to certain ideas, certain possibilities, potentials to see what there is to accomplish. And part of the reason why people talk about like the link between like mental health and low self-esteem and, you know, self-perception with social media and whatnot is because when you see that certain things are more successful or certain things are being gravitated towards and you don't possess those things or you don't know how to get them it feels as if you are being left out of being able to just enjoy a stable quality of life um but as far as like the influence of others like looking to other people whom we respect or seeing ourselves represented in somebody like oh they represent my interest or they we have similar values they're like me so if they say that they enjoy this stuff or that they find that they will associate themselves with it even if they may not personally use it, then I can trust it. And, and the thing is, that's never going to go away. People would just have different standards, different values on which they judge, you know what I'm saying? Like what is good or what's bad, but looking for those signals of what is the thing that they should be attaching themselves to versus avoiding, that's, that's never going to be, that's never going to go away because most people understand instinctively that they do not have all the answers and that they, you know, we're all learning from one another. And that we want to try to make the best moves for ourselves and for those that we care about. And so in order to do that, you take in these signals, you know, since different people, what people associate themselves with. Advertisers are willing to pay good money to have their product or service put in front of a large audience being promoted by someone the audience trusts. Influencer marketing expected to grow to be worth $13.8 billion this year. That's an 812% increase since 2016. That tells you that brands find influencer marketing to be very important to their advertising campaigns. I showed those pictures just a minute ago because influencers are incentivized to get your attention in any way possible. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the pendulum has swung way too far and influencers are going to any way possible. 
Now, this dude obviously already has a pretty well defined body. He works, you know, what I'm saying, uh, uh, you know, on it a lot. There's some photo, um, uh, you know, stuff with the contrast, like making the tattoos more prominent, whatnot, and the shadow and, and, and everything. But look at, they trimmed, look at his torso. Look at his torso. They trimmed it, made the biceps um, look a little more defined. The veins. <laughs> Like this, his shoulders look the same, but with that added shadow, it really, uh, 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 the contrast, right? Because you see the, you know, the sun coming, it creates a much greater contrast. So it looks like it's just like really protruding, like his shoulders ready to fucking jump off of his goddamn arm and come up and smack you in the face for staring. But, but it's like, yeah, already a pretty, you know, saying good looking person, but, you know, some simple tricks, you know, photo editing and, you know, just, you know, basic shit like lighting, contrast and whatnot, really... You know, I'm saying ex accent different features and stuff that uh, people are already paying attention to and just turning them the fuck up. Yeah, you can, and, and even his abdomen, it's is is uh, his abs and whatnot. Um, now, why just a solid four pack? Hmm. Well, I ain't even I ain't even got a two pack, so I'm not hating on. I'm just like just like interesting. You don't usually I don't usually see that. Unfortunately, the pendulum has swung way too far, and influencers are going to extremes to alter their appearance to receive views for the content. In the New Yorker article titled The Age of Instagram Face, according to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, Americans received more than 7 million neurotoxin injections in 2018 and more than 2.5 million filler injections. That year, Americans spent $16.5 billion on cosmetic surgery. 92% of these procedures were performed on women. This article was really interesting as the author visited numerous plastic surgeons who discussed the emergence of an Instagram face that had similar procedures as celebrities who had large social media followings. Thanks to injectables, cosmetic... Basically because each platform, you know, incentivizes different things. When it comes to Instagram, it's all about image and there are certain things that are just more pleasing aesthetically that really are not present in that much of the human population. But because everybody can be a, a professional photographer and learn lighting and learn how to use Photoshop and Facetune and, you know, saying different types of, of, you know, effects, you know, you know, pre and post production, it's, it's, it's wiring people to be like, especially women, as he's pointing out, to be like, oh, so this is what I have to keep up with. This is the way I'm going to be able to succeed or get, you know, whatever benefits are associated and, you know, saying with with getting this attention. Um, so this is what I have to do. And it is. And, and even though there are some countries where it's far more prevalent, you know, like in Latin Americans and South American countries, you have girls that are they've barely gotten puberty. They're not even out of high school. And. That is what they ask for. They ask to get, you know what I'm saying, their face done or they get their breast done or they get their their butt done and whatnot. Teenage girls, not even full grown ass women. They've barely gone through puberty and already they're like, well, this is going to set me up to, to, you know what I'm saying, for the most amount of success in whatever career I choose. And it's unfortunate because in many cases they're correct because that is what people, um, you know what I'm saying, will, will judge their, their, their aptitude. You know, saying that's that that will be the criteria in which their aptitude is judged on. Is that is this somebody that I would want to sleep with, or that I think is attractive to the core audience? That the core audience would want to sleep with. Well, it's not even just to sleep with, but it's is this what is appealing to look at? Like I'm just watching the news and shit. Because if you watch the news and shit, and some of these weather, you know, saying presenters and shit, the the women, it's like. Most people who are put on camera and media, media and entertainment are going to be above average in attractiveness. That's just what it is. All, all, all of the things being equal. But then there's no reason. There's no real reason for somebody who's talking about the weather, for a woman who's telling you about the weather forecast to be wearing a mini dress. There's no reason for like a weather woman to like have her, you know, saying to, to have her cleavage exposed and whatnot. It's like, yeah, they, you know, wear what you want. But it's like, that's not what's supposed to be the focal point here. Cosmetic procedures are no longer just for people who want huge changes or who are deep in battle with the aging process. They're for millennials or even, in rarefied cases, members of Gen Z. This is the real problem in my opinion. The new role models of our youth are Instagram influencers who use deception to promote a beauty standard that is unattainable. Think about this. The highest paid and most popular beauty influencers can't even attain the image they present to the public naturally, whether it be through Photoshop, Facetune, or plastic. Look at her waist. Look at that. 
such a small percentage of women are actually built like that. And even those that are, it's not as if they don't have any problems because people are naturally born with, you know, different features and everything that disrupt certain processes of develop, you know, of the body or certain parts, you know, saying developing in the way that they're supposed to. So even those who have this shit naturally will still have their own health issues. However, aesthetically pleasing it may be that hourglass figure the hourglass figure you know has its own kind of attractiveness but it's not the only type of figure that is attractive and i i, I think that it's um super annoying how this one way of looking at women has, has has gotten reinforced in the same way that i think too much focus has been put on like you know saying having the biggest butt surgery they're using devices to trick you into thinking their image is attainable the re oh my god plastic surgery they're using devices to trick you Oh my god. Yo. Yo. And here's the thing. And here's the thing. I can't even hold you. I can't even hold you. Just looking at these pictures, this is what is more visually appealing. Right? And I was just talking shit about the hourglass figure, but this one is like a healthy one. You know what I'm saying? It seems like everything is proportional right now. And it's like this woman, I'm not saying I'm not saying that she's not healthy here either, but it is just less visually appealing up front when com when contrasted with this. You know, uh uh toned, you know what I'm saying, stomach, very symmetrical and whatnot. Um Yeah. Which is why sex is continues to be sold alongside, you know what I'm saying, cars and cologne and and you know, saying going to different social events, going to the bar, smoking, you know, what I'm saying all kinds of bullshit. You know, that's that's what it is. It's playing off of that base instinct of like, yeah, we know that you're like you're into this thing, so we're gonna use that and juxtapose it with this other thing. Their image is attainable. The result is obvious: young women feeling the need to get plastic surgery. On a deeper level, the subconscious messaging that is being perpetuated is that young surgery. On a deeper level, the subconscious. What is this? What is this? What is this? That little bo that booty is cute. Booty booties of different sizes are attractive, and I I want to say something to all the men out there, or anybody with a penis. Your eyes are bigger than your dick. This is a perfectly fine booty and when it comes to and, and and listen this is selling sex right this is selling the you know illusion of sex. oh no we're just admiring your body we're just admiring your city blah 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 this is all about this is all about sex all right and functionally i would actually prefer to be with of uh, her in this state as opposed to this state and that's fine i'm not self-conscious about that but i know at this point what it is that actually is functional compatible sexually this is more compatible this is actually closer you know what i'm saying to what is you know saying preferable you know what I'm saying as far as the purport as far as the proportions and what not everything it's all about proportions this is disproportionate to her body you know what I'm saying it's getting in it's because it gets in the way at a certain point all that ass and all that thighs gets in the way which is why motherfuckers if you ever actually watch a porno and shit you see dudes have to like depending on their dick size and whatnot and their flexibility they have to do all kinds of different positions and some positions people will stay in longer than others and you can even look at the reactions of women to the to the to the ones in which they actually enjoy and there's a reason for that there's some stuff that looks good presentable in video on a camera that isn't actually all that uh fulfilling when it comes down to the act itself and so that's why i say your eyes are bigger than your dick in that I would have a much more fun time, I feel, with these proportions as opposed to this. Conscious messaging that is being perpetuated is that young women's only value is in how thick they are on social media. I think 95% of the most followed people on Instagram use Facetune easily. 
the popular plastic surgeon told me, and I would say that 95% of these people have also had some sort of cosmetic procedure. Let me be very clear, I see nothing wrong with people getting cosmetic surgery. The problem I have is when influencers aren't transparent about their surgeries, use of Facetune in Photoshop, or consumption of steroids. What and this is a moment also where it, it, it's, you know, invoking the idea of think of the children is a real fucking thing. A lot of people who are liberal, left-wing, or progressive, they like to decry that as just being like a conservative crutch. Like, oh, think of the children and whatnot. But it's like, while the context in which conservatives may bring that shit up, like about transgenderism and LGBTQ stuff, or about learning about um, uh, sexual education, or, you know what I'm saying, learning about, you know saying, points of view from minorities and everything, you know, so yeah, that's obviously bullshit. But the concept of like children being malleable and that they shouldn't be, we should not expose them to all the things that adults, you know, saying they're going through or thinking about or doing because you have to have a certain level of maturity um, and understanding of the consequences in order to properly engage in that shit. You know, um, to me, this is where, you know, people who are of this space need to really invoke that shit and be like, no think of the children but also think of the adults think of the pressure that we're putting on other adults that that has never really stopped um civilization from from going forward and developing you know what I'm saying it's like yeah it's great to care about aesthetics and people to you know what I'm saying care more about like fashion and, and to get more into you know developing these these you know understandings of photography and and you know marketing and all that shit but that there's a consequence to that and it also goes to show why, you know, sometimes the gatekeepers have a point or sometimes why the gatekeepers are really important in being like, yo, you know, saying it's it's we can only let in so many people at a fucking time, you know, and it's just like in some, you know, some respects, um, you know, saying the gatekeepers have been tossed to the side for better and for worse. And I think in some respects, at least right now, when it comes to like the body image thing, Instagram influencing, whatnot, we see it very much teetering on the on the on the worse end of the spectrum as the host is uh you know alluded to what makes it even worse is when these same people lie about their procedures and then sell products based on a false image this clip is a perfect example of how different someone can look using different angles and lighting. This is a nice looking girl, but then she immediately becomes a new, more attractive version of herself with a slight change in the lighting and angle. Most photos from beauty or bathing suit influencers are deceptive, which I consider fraudulent. They're not displaying how they realistically look and then selling the image as being attainable by buying their mascara or eyelash extensions. Even influencers who haven't had any cosmetic work or use crazy filters will rely on unnatural poses to appear to have a physique more alluring than the one they really have. When you can <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um... One thing that really annoys me, a trend that's happened right now, and you see more so in in in, in um, like strippers or you know those who do like more like adult adult uh, uh, oriented content, is that a woman will be wearing you know if she's showing off her butt and whatnot, right? She will take her hands and kind of like lift up her cheeks and everything to kind of show like you know show that they have more definition and weight than they actually do more presence you could say um you know because then you'll see other pictures of them where they don't have their hands up you know on their butts and it's just like it's a you know in the same they look more modest sometimes even flat and you know saying that with all the different you know uh shapewear and the clothing and whatnot and the poses that they can strike and whatnot right i mean hell heels are like the most basic form of this shit wearing heels automatically puts an arch in your back and accentuates you know saying whatever little bit of booty you got you know what I'm saying? Because it automatically puts your, your, your body in an unnatural position, but it's one that's more aesthetically um, appealing. And just as he's pointing out here is that look at warped flowers around butt. Oh, yeah. Yep. You can see it. Yeah. You can see it to get to get that figure, to get it. And it's just like, this is a lovely woman and whatnot. And even if she had a flatter one, it's like, there'd still be plenty of men lining up, Consider the you know what I'm saying, to court her, you know, to get her attention. But you know, nobody can ever have enough. Enough is never enough for anybody.
demographics of the audience, we shouldn't be surprised to see depression and mental health issues arise at the rate society has seen over the last 10 years. Mental health problems are on the rise among adolescents and young adults, and social media may be a driver behind the increase. This AJMC article includes a research study that detailed a rise of 70% or more in mental health issues in adolescents over the past 10 years, which also coincides with social media use. Dove has released a moving video called Reverse Selfie to address the impact of editing apps on the self-esteem of young people. Dove's self-esteem research project found that 85% of girls were using retouching apps and image filters by the age of 13. By the age of 13, young women are already negatively influenced to dislike their bodies enough to use filters before posting photos online. On the other side, we have the male fitness industry that is full of frauds. If you donated $1 for every time a fitness influencer lied about being natural, you could solve Sarah McLaughlin's homeless dog problem. <laughs> Be an angel for a Jesus with Christ. Them. In the make money online niche, you have a plethora of- Now that's a fucking throwback, boy. <laughs> of fake gurus. In the fitness world, and just as prevalent, you have the fake natties. These are dudes who claim to be natural, but have the physique of someone who looks about as drug-free as Lamar Odom walking out of a brothel. If you thought young women were the only ones who suffer from body image issues, think again. Men deal with it just as much. The most followed Instagram influencers in the fitness space have physiques that look like they were made in a lab. And guys don't follow fitness influencers for their stock tips. They want the seps to hug their sleeve as tight as a newly drafted player hugs Roger Goodell. Even yeah, you know, I'm really glad that he brought this up and it's a relatively short, you know, it's, it's a relatively short portion just because you know, I'm sure that there hasn't been as much research done, but also the the it's the long-standing ex the long-standing expectation of men is you are disposable. You are more disposable than women. You know, like you sacrifice your life. The women and children come first. You know, what I'm saying lay yourself down for your for the for the woman. And yeah, while while you know patriarchy and and other privileges and shit like that from being a man and whatnot. It's like it also leaves you in a very vulnerable position because it's like, what if I don't want to play into this shit? Then you get ostracized and punished not only by women, but by other men and whatnot who do fit into the demographic or they benefit, you know, otherwise benefit from it or just trying to enforce it and whatnot. You know, and men's and men's mental health is greatly impacted, you know, by this shit, too, as he's pointing out, you know, with like all the fitness shit, because, you know, who doesn't want to look good? And there's certain expectations for what a man, a good looking man, you know, saying looks like. Um, also just, you know, functionally, you know, having a certain amount of like functional musculature, you know, saying allows you to be more effective at like, you know, defending yourself and, you know, showing that your prospective part romantic partners that you can protect them or anybody that, you know, feels that you could protect, you know, saying, um, protect them. You know, saying in physical altercations. Even worse, many of the gym bros flexing on your social media feed perpetuate fitness and diet myths to their loyal followers. The answer to getting a body that looks like it was produced by CGI is to just eat more protein. Link in the description. Attention sells in the social media world, and the outlier physiques receive the most. Fitness influencers are incentivized to go to the extremes to lie about their obvious. Woo! Receive the most. Fitness. You look at that man's waist. He looks, look at, look at the musculature. Yeah, while it may look so appealing with the veins throbbing and whatnot, he looks severely um, dehydrated for one. And also he skipped fucking leg day. And I'm sorry, that shit is super unappealing. But, um, but also the waist just looks, I don't know, it's just something about it that looks like it's unnaturally thin, especially in proportion to like the shoulders and the, in the, in the, in the, in the, fucking biceps and whatnot and the chest it's like what the fuck is this influencers are incentivized to go to the extremes to lie about their obvious steroid use and maximize their physical appearance unfortunately many of the youth following these completely natural wink wink bodybuilders don't know that real gains happen when you eat clen trend hard and avar give up <laughs> all right that's all i'm gonna watch of that samboy samboy reacts and uh yeah, just want to do something a little more quick and uh, talk to y'all later. Peace.